the Chiefs' official schedule has been dropped. We're going to take a deep dive into that today and see if we want to switch any of our official picks. Plus, we answer your questions from Twitter. Stick around. Chiefs Kingdom. It's time for All Chiefed Up with your hosts, Steve and Mike Williams. From the bluegrass to the Red Sea, this is the Kingdom's Podcast. All right, so one more thing before we wrap this up. I did have uh, one tweet that I would like to delete here. Uh, Okay. You know how we do. But it is from Jordan on Twitter, at Borden Jeff. Andy Reid is on thinner ice than most people think. He, dead ass, wasn't that good of a coach for a stretch last season. So if we're mid next season, Andy might be sweating. Where where is this guy coming up with the fact that Andy Reid's on a hot seat? Like Andy Reid has been magnificent Dude. since coming to Kansas City. He changed he he changed the whole I culture think, of Chiefs football. Like does he want to go back to the Palco years where we were just like praying to God we could, you know, get a touchdown pass? let alone win a football game, or do we want to be competing for the Super Bowl every year? So, I mean, I think Andy Reid's about as close as you could get to maybe getting a lifetime contract with an NFL team as anybody. Man, I like, mean, he's been maybe, solid. Yeah, maybe Belichick with the Patriots, or, or like, but Andy Reid is like a top, he's a top two, three coach in football, and he's not going anywhere. We could, we could win two games this year, and they're not getting rid of Andy Reid, dude. So, no, and it's like, I've you got know, just a few words for this guy, Steve. Well, yeah. You know, delete that shit. Yeah, that's what he gets. I, I'm not even. I don't even want to entertain. But hey, before we go, we did get a question through our um, allchiefedup.com from Eric Aldegren six seven nine one. He asked, and I'll let you answer this, Steve. Are we getting Melvin Ingram back this year? So we have kind of covered this before in previous episodes, but I'll let you go ahead and touch on it again for him. Um, possibility. We used the UFA tender on him. So if he does not sign with another team by deadline, I don't know what that date is. Google it if you want to. Uh, we do get him on a one-year $4.4 million contract. And I really hope that that's how it works out because I think getting Ingram back uh, at that price for another year would be fantastic for this team. You saw how the defensive line responded last year when he came into the room. And we got a lot of young guys that he can really help with, like Karloftis. Uh, and I think it'd just be a good thing for the Chiefs all around. So that do I think we'll get him back? I'm, I'm hoping so. I think that we got a good chance. It just really depends on if he wants to sign with another team or not. Yeah, and then they have to give up a draft pick through comp- compensation, I guess. Right. I guess the team don't give it up. But, uh, hey, I got a quick question about that, though. All these, like, snot-nosed, like, rookie contract guys who just play two, three years and have a few good games and they want to set out and hold out and demand trades and everything. Does Melvin Ingram not get that? I mean, he's a veteran that's been in the league forever, but he has to sign for $4.4 million. Like, can he hold out? Like, how does that work? If he holds out, do we get something? I'm going to have to look into that because yeah, why wouldn't Melvin Ingram be able to be like, I ain't playing for $4.4 million. I don't care what the league rule says. Obviously, the league rule says you got to sign a rookie contract. Oh. But he don't have guys to. Are, he don't have to. I, I guess. I mean, yeah. he he has the option here to sign with another team. So I mean, if right. he signs with another team, but if nobody wants to give him that much money, then I mean, that's going to be in his market anyway. So I don't I don't think that should be an issue. Okay. Well, I was just saying I feel like Megan Ingram has a has more right to hold out than these like snot nosed punk kids. And like, I really hate the way that the NFL is starting to turn into that. Starting um, to be the NBA all yes, over. Yes, it is. Where you know. These guys are so entitled to everything and they, they just think they all think they're the greatest and they want to team hop and they want to go where it's cool to play. They want to team up with each other and make super teams like the Rams did last year and Tampa Bay did the year before that. And you know what? It, it pays off for it, just like it did with Golden State. They got the they got their Super Bowls, just like Golden State got their championships. So, I mean, people see that. That's what they want to do. And I, I just really hate that the NFL is getting to that. But I, I have a feeling it's going to happen more and more unless they change Dude, something up. Well, I just – I feel like this is all sports. Look, you're starting to get the NIL and the NCAA. And yeah. These kids are transferring from, like, Division two schools trying to pick schools on who gives them the most NIL contract money. It's like, when is this ever going to end? Like, 
we've created a monster in athletics and sports and oh yeah it's really hard to find people that want to win that want to just solidify themselves a legacy and, and win without taking big money or without building a super team and All right i, well, I think, I, think I guess people... we're, we're just getting old we're those old guys like crying about stuff but i just I, I it doesn't appeal to me like i don't like watching baseball now because you know, you're paying your best players $500 million to come in and strike out every third time. Uh, you're paying the NBA. I don't like watching that. It's boring. They don't play defense. They barely do anything. They get paid billions of dollars to come in and take jump shot after jump shot. It's just annoying. Like, do we want football to turn into the Pro Bowl? Like, because that's what it's going to end yeah. up eventually. <laughs> Everybody's going to be scared to death to tackle because if I don't last two years, I won't get this $300 billion contract. So it's well. like – it's eventually going to turn into it. I mean, you're I, seeing a lot of that more and more. People this day and age are looking at it more like a business than just the sports and like, you know, the integrity and wanting to win for your team and stick with one team. It's all about the business, it's all about the money. And you're seeing that in every sport where, you know, you'll get like the old school guys being like, hey, these new guys are wusses, man. I mean, he's got a, oh, he hurt his toe. So he's going to sit out of a playoff game. Like he's a sissy. And you know, a lot of it might not even be their decision. Maybe that's the team's decision. We're paying him hundreds of millions of dollars. So we don't want to risk that getting worse. I mean, there's a lot of these guys that are forced to sit out and I just think it's the nature of it, man. It's just what it's going to. I don't think we're alone in this thinking. I believe the chief's front office has this view as well, because if you look at this past draft class, that's the one thing you can say. Every one of these guys are hard workers. They want to win. They want to get after it. You can't tell me you're going to find a harder working guy than Carl Loftus or a harder worker than Leo Chanel. It ain't happening. These are old school dudes that want to go out and hit you, and they don't care if they're in an ice bath all week long. Well, they want to win a, a game. That's how you counteract this culture that we have now. If you can actually build a team, a young team, that all have that mentality and are workers and they want to win and they want to be in Kansas City, and, and they're worried about, you know, their performance and their legacy more than they're worried about the dollar signs, then that's how you counteract it. Because guess what? That team's going to end up winning because right. when it really boils down to it. That's what it takes. And I think that team's going to have success. And a lot of these teams that just form up super teams or try to take the most money they can get, uh, that's, that's going to fail. Well, it's, it's got to be a flash in the pan because you still have to work around salary caps. It's amazing how the Rams manipulate the cap every year to sign every single player. It's I don't know right. how they do it. They must have well, the best cap guy in the league. But well, Brett Veach managed to do it a couple of years ago. So I mean, he he's pretty good at that too. But yeah, that's about all I have on this subject. I'm I just it it kind of annoys me. But <laughs> we'll move on. But hey, I'm excited for this coming season. I mean, I think like I was saying earlier, I think this team's going to be young and hungry, and I, I'm just excited to see how it goes. I think we can have a big year. So thanks for joining us today, guys. If you're listening on uh, podcast form, whether you're on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or Google Podcast, Stitcher, whatever it might be, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Give us a like. Leave us a, a review, five stars preferably, because we're awesome like that. And if you're on YouTube, make sure that you guys give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell, get some notifications. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we enjoy getting your questions and everything, so make sure to interact with us. Uh, we love talking with you guys. So you all have a good one, and we will see you back here in a few days. Yep. See you guys. Peace. You've been listening to All Chiefed Up. Be sure to subscribe and follow on all social media at All Chiefed Up.